Hey everyone, it's another fantastic episode from the Razy Show. I love you people because I love to talk. And today's subject... Today's subject is going to be the MPOX. MPOX. That... That the WHO has declared already an emergency and um, the, the WHO, sorry about that. So can everybody hear me? Um, I'm just checking my sound. All right, so the WHO, according to the news, and I'll, I'm going to post this link. In the comment section. The link's there, I just sent it. The WHO director slash general declares MPOX outbreak a public health emergency of international concern. I'm going to read that again. The WHO director general declares MPOX outbreak a public health emergency of international concern. What does that mean? Is this the next, is this the next super pandemic? The WHO Director General, Dr. Tedros Adhanam Gabriasus, has determined that the upsurge of monkeypox in the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, and a growing number of countries in Africa constitutes a public health emergency of international concern. PHE I see under the International Health Regulations 2005 IHR. Dr. Tedros declaration came on the advice of an IHR emergency committee of independent experts who met earlier in the day to review data presented by experts from the WHO and the affected countries. The committee informed the Director General that it considers the upsurge of MPOX to be a PH. EIC with potential to spread further across countries in Africa and possibly outside the continent. The Director General will share the report of the committee's meeting and based on the advice of the committee issue temporary recommendations to countries. In declaring the PHEIC, Dr. Tater said the emergency, the emergence of a new clade of monkeypox is rapid spread in Eastern DRC. The reporting of cases in several neighboring countries are very worrying on top of outbreaks of other MPOX clades in DRC and other countries in Africa. It's clear that a coordinated international response is needed all oh, to stop these outbreaks and save lives. I'm gonna read that one again. <sighs> In declaring the PHEIC, Dr. Tedros said the emergence of a new clade of MPOX is rapid spreading inter in Eastern DRC. And the reporting of cases in several neighboring countries are very worrying. On top of outbreaks of other MPOX clades in DRC and other countries in Africa, it's clear that a coordinated international response is needed to stop these outbreaks and save lives. The WHO Regional Director for Africa, Dr. Machidiso, Machis, Mach, <laughs> Dr. Machidiso Moedi said, significant efforts are already underway in close collaboration with communities and governments. 
with our country teams working on the frontiers to help reinforce measures to curb MPOX. With the growing spread of the virus, we're scaling up further through coordinated international action to support countries bring the outbreaks to an end. We are already underway in close collaboration with communities and governments with our country teams working on the front lines to help reinforce measures to curb MPOX. With the growing spread of the virus, we're scaling up further through coordinated international action to support countries bring the outbreak to bring the outbreaks to an end. While doesn't that sound familiar? Doesn't that sound like something we've already experienced? Do you remember the lockdowns? Do you remember the money you had to spend just to get from one city to the next? Do you remember you had to get vaccines? And you couldn't go, you had to have a vaccine card? Doesn't this sound so familiar? Committee Chair Professor Dimi Oigan Ogoino, Ogoina said, the current upsurge of MPOX in parts of Africa, in parts of Africa, along with the spread of a new sexually transmissible strain of the monkeypox virus, is an emergency. Not only for Africa, but for the entire globe. MPOX originating in Africa was neglected there and later caused a global outbreak in 2022. It is time to act decisively to prevent history from repeating itself. Oh my gosh. I have to read that one again. Committee Chair Professor Dimi Ogoina said, the current upsurge of MPOX in parts of Af Africa, along with the spread of a newly sexually transmissible strain of the MPOX virus, is an emergency. Not only for Africa, but for the entire world. MPOX originating in Africa was neglected there and later caused a global outbreak in 2022. It is time to act decisively to prevent history from repeating itself. So what is act decisively from what is act what does this mean? It is time to act decisively to prevent history from repeating itself. Mean there's a global outbreak. They must be working on vaccines. Get your money ready because you're gonna to need to buy passes to move somewhere. If you wanna fly, you have to show proof you're vaccinated. That's what's coming, isn't it, people? I'm not sure, I'm just guessing. The PHEIC determination is the second in two years relating to MPOX, caused by the orthopox virus. MPOX, the PHEIC determination is the second in two years relating to MPOX, caused by the orthopox virus. MPOX was first detected in humans in 1970 in the DRC. The disease is considered endemic to countries in Central and West Africa. What is endemic? Oh my gosh. The language these people use are just, ew. In July, 2022, <clears throat> the multi-country outbreak of MPOX was declared a PHEIC as it spread rapidly via sexual contact across a wide, ra wide range of countries where the virus had not been seen before. That PHEIC was declared over in May 2023 as there had been a sustained decline in global cases. MPAX has been reported in the DRC for more than a decade, and the number of cases reported each year has increased steadily over the period. Last year, reported cases increased significantly, and already the number of cases reported so far this year has exceeded last year's total with more than 15 thousand six hundred cases and five hundred and thirty seven deaths. The emergence last year and rapid spread of a new virus strain in DRC clade one B, which appears to be spreading mainly through sexual networks, and its detection in countries neighboring the DRC is especially concerning. And one of the main reasons for the declaration of the PHEIC 
In the past month, over 100 laboratory confirmed cases of clade 1B have been reported in four countries neighboring the DRC that have not reported MPOX before. Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, and Uganda. Experts believe the true number of cases to be higher as a large proportion of clinically compatible cases had not been tested. Several outbreaks in, of different clades of NPOX have occurred in different countries with different modes of transmission and different levels of risk. The two vaccines, oh here we go, currently in use for NPOX are recommended by the WHO Strategic Advisory Group of Experts of Immunization and also approved by the WHO listed national regulatory authorities, as well as by individual countries, including Nigeria and the DRC. <sighs> Last week, the Director General triggered the process for emergence. Last week, the Director General triggered the process for emergence use listing, listing for MPOX vaccines, which will accelerate vaccine access for lower income countries, which had not issued their own national regulatory approval. Emergency use listing also enables partners, including Gavi and UNICEF, to procure vaccines for distribution. The WHO is working with countries and vaccine manufacturers on potential vaccine donations and coordinating with partners through the Interim Medical Countermeasures Network to facilitate equitable access to vaccines therapeutics, diagnostics, and other tools. The WHO anticipates an immediate funding requirement of an initial U.S. 15 million to support surveillance, preparedness, and response activity. Surveillance? Huh. Surveillance of U.S. citizens or surveillance of the whole world? The WHO anticipates an immediate funding requirement of an initial U.S. 15 million to support surveillance, preparedness and response activities. A needs assessment is being undertaken across the three levels of the organization. To allow for immediate scale up, the WHO released U.S. 1.45 million from the WHO contingency fund for emergencies and may need to release more in the coming days. The organization appeals to donors to fund the full extent of need of the MPOX response. End of reading. So, MPOX, yeah, look at the, do your own due diligence, do your own research online. Look, how many cases of MPOX is in the Philippines. Let's start there. So far. Okay, this was two days ago. I'll leave the link in the comment section again so you know where I'm deriving my information. This is from Phil Star Global. So you know I'm not making this shit up. This can affect your kids. It is real, but why all of a sudden MPOX, such an old virus or disease, whatever you want to call it, here's a. I left that. So, here we are. This is Phil Star Global. The DOH detects two more MPOX patients. Active cases rise to five. Manila. Let me just zoom this in. I can't see anymore. Um, Manila, Philippines. There are now five active MPOX cases in the Philippines after two more patients were confirmed by the Department of Health. In a statement on Wednesday, the D Department of Health said that one of the cases was discovered in Metro Manila and the other was in Calabarzon. 
both have the milder MPXV clade too. Initial in, in both have the milder MPXV clade too. Initial investigation is consistent with earlier findings of local transmission of clade two. Details are being verified as to how close and intimate skin to skin contact may have taken place. The Department of Health said in a statement to reporters. The patient from Calabrazan is a 12-year-old male. His symptoms began on August 10th when he developed rashes on his face, legs, trunk, and other parts of his body. He also had a cough and swollen, and swollen lymph nodes. The boy consulted a rural health unit and a sample was collected on August 23rd. He has no history of travel any time three weeks before the start of the symptoms. Other circumstances are still being verified, the Department of Health said. Meanwhile, the patient from Metro Manila is a 26-year-old woman whose symptoms began on August 20th. The Department of Health said she noticed rashes on her face and had a fever. She consulted an outpatient clinic who advised her to isolate herself at home. In a follow-up call on August 23rd, she said she had additional rashes in her arms, trunk, and pubic area. Ooh. The patient also had sore throat and swollen lymph nodes. She did not travel any time three weeks before her symptoms started. She also did not go around even as, as she had symptoms, the health agency said. According to the Department of Health, the two new patients are recovering at home, isolated, and are being monitored by the local health authorities. Oh my gosh. There have been 14 cases of MPOX in the country since July 2022, nine of whom have long recovered since 2023. Five MPOX patients are waiting for their symptoms to resolve. The Department of Health said the common MPOX symptoms include skin lesions that last two to four weeks, a fever, a headache, muscle aches, back pain, low energy, and swollen lymph nodes. MPOX can be transmitted to humans through close, intimate contact with someone who is infectious with contaminated materials like used clothes, or utensils, or with infected animals, the Department of Health said. All right, I'm done reading that. Let's see how many cases are in the U.S. Anyways, we have a problem. To the Batcave. To the Batcave, Batman. All right, so how many MPOX cases in the U.S. Let's check it. Okay, wait, let's read from let's, I like Al Jazeera. Let's check that. I like their news. I'm going to post this link so you know I'm not making this bullshit up. Here's another post in the comment section. Let's check. This is from aljazeera.com. Mapped. New MPOX cases reported. What countries have it now? Uganda. Uganda has reported two new cases of the clade 1B strain of the MPOX virus. The health ministry has announced that one of the patients is a truck driver and that both are in isolation at a hospital in Entebbe. Entebbe. About an hour south of the capital. And to be, and to be, be I, I can't, pre I don't even know these words. I really don't. Where has the MPOX spread? Burundi, Cameroon, the Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Ghana, 
Ivory Coast, Kenya, Liberia, Montepiki, Nigeria, Pakistan, the Philippines, the Republic of Congo, Rwanda, South Africa, Sweden, Thailand, and Uganda have reported cases. A total of 18. Doesn't sound to me, let's read that again and make your own determination. It doesn't sound like it's a health crisis, a world health crisis. It sounds almost like they're taking this old virus, which we already, in my opinion, it just sounds like something that comes and goes, like a bad relationship, right? And they're just, they're trying to use it for new lockdowns. It's a money, it becomes a money maker. Oh my gosh. Disinfectants. Food sells out. Stores don't carry cleaning supplies. Stores get cleared out, right? Uh, you know, it's a, my opinion, but doesn't this feel like something we've always already experienced in our lives? Remember, where has the MPOC spread? Burundi, Cameroon, the Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Ghana, Ivory Coast, Kenya, Liberia, Montepiki, Nigeria, Pakistan, the, Fi the Philippines, the Republic of the Congo, Rwanda, South Africa, Sweden, Thailand, and Uganda have reported cases. A total, all of those places have a total of 18 cases. All in all is what I'm reading, unless I'm reading it wrong. I'm going to post this. You tell me. Okay? Are you ready? I'm going to post this so you can tell me if it's 18 cases in each country or 18 cases total. I'm reading it as total. Here it is. It's going to the comment section. I don't even know if all these comments are being posted. All right. The WHO. Here we go with the WHO. Oh, my gosh. Declared the virus a public health emergency of the international of international concern While emphasizing that mpox is not the new COVID of course, it's not Because all those little breakaway COVIDs uh, what, did they, what did they call them? Um, what did they call the, the little off beat of the main COVIDs? I forgot the name can somebody tell me what they called that what did they call that? I want to post a question. Hold on. Question. What were the little useless breakaway strains Of what what was the name given those? <sighs> of the little useless breakaway strain of the I'll use the word offshoot. Strains of COVID. There was a name. I, I I can't think of it. Variant. Variant. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Excuse <coughs> me. Oh, okay. Was it variant? It's a, this is a trick question, or was it or was it live? <laughs> or was it a sister stream? Okay. I'm saving that. Give me an answer, people. Like, share, and comment. Come on, I need I need it. I need that attention. 
I feel like I'm all alone here. Here we go. I want to read that again. The WHO declared the virus a public health emergency of international concern while emphasizing that MPOX is not the new COVID. No, because the variants, the variants of COVID didn't really impact anyone. So there wasn't a need to worry. This is the second emergency alert relating to MPOX from the Global Health Agency in two years. MPAX has been identified in Africa since 2022. Okay, we already written, originally traced to the Democratic Republic of Congo. The current outbreak is mostly triggered by clade one, believed to be a more serious variant than that can spread through skin to skin contact. Okay, I'm scared. Clade, clade 2 is believed to cause milder infections and has a fatality rate of 0.2% compared with 3.9% for clade 1. Africa. According to the data from the Af Africa Centuries for Disease Control and Prevention, Africa, the CD, uh, CDC, WHO, and the governments of Kenya, Manzabiki, Uganda, and the Ivory Coast variants of MPOX have been detected in these countries this year. Clade 1 and Clade 1A. The DRC has experienced the biggest outbreak of the disease ever recorded with thousands of people infected as of August 21. The government declared an, epi oh, an epidemic in December 2022. Alright, I think we already read all of this. In the Philippines, authorities said the milder clay 2 variant has been confirmed in the most recent case there, a 33-year-old a 33-year-old Filipino male with no travel history. The patient is the country's 10th confirmed case since 2022, and authorities say MPOX has likely been spreading quietly for a while. If it's been spreading quietly for a while, why is the WHO calling it a global health emergency? Tell me that. Pakistan authorities said its first patient reported this year is a male infected with clade two. Clade two. Europe. Sweden reported an MPOX case on August 15th, which was confirmed to be more serious. Clade one variant. Americas, Middle East, Oceania, and Antarctica. No countries in North or South America have reported new clade one cases so far. However, they should be alert to possible clade one and clade two cases. The Pan American Health Organization said on August 9th. The region reported more than 62,000 cases of the clade two virus from 2022 to July 2024, including 141 deaths. All right, I didn't find anything in the U.S. about this. How many, how many NCOX played one? I think it's played one, is it? Variant are reported in the U.S. now. Nothing. I don't find anything. So, I don't see anything online. You know, so... Oh, here's something from the, NAS the CDC. I'll post this too. Okay, this is from the CDC, the Centers of Disease Control, which 
I believe. I do believe their information is correct, I think. U.S. and Pox case trends reported to the CDC. As of May 2024, U.S. and Pox case trends data will be updated. Okay, here we go, here we go. Here we go. So, let me see. There's a chart here. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I don't know. There's really no... Uh, make a selection on your chart. Okay, I... There, okay, this is a chart, and I'm not good at reading charts. But, anyways, I don't know. But, it says most cases of this are people that are not vaccinated. So, uh, if there's a vaccine and it's proven, get get your kid, get your family the vaccine. Um, and be careful with, the, I guess, it's what I'm reading, careful with close contact while this thing is supposedly spreading. Okay? So, um, let me just try it once more. How many cases of NPOX in the U.S. now? Okay. Well, this makes sense. NPOX cases. Oh, this is from, here, I'll post this link. Just ignore the CD. Or right, you want to check out the CDC, try it. I can't read the chart. I don't know how. Here's a link from... Uh, give me a second. Okay, I just sent, I'm sending it now. So this is from addition.cnn.com. Okay, here we go. Mpox cases in the U.S. rise as vaccination rates lag and new threats loom. I believe in the vaccines. I do. But to call this a global health emergency, I don't. If if the vaccine helps, go get your vaccine and avoid the problem. More than 500 mpox cases have been reported in the United States in 2024, according to the CDC data. And relatively low levels of vaccination leave many at risk. Granted, there are those out there in the world that don't believe in vaccines. There's people in the world that are anti-vaccine. I'm not anti-vaccine. I don't. I believe in vaccines, depending on what the vaccine is. So do your own homework. If you're giving your kids vaccines, do your own due diligence, your own research, and find out what they're giving your kids. That's all it's about, learning and educating yourself. If you're not willing to educate yourself, educate yourself, then blame yourself. If you're scared of a vaccine or something, if you blame, don't blame yourself later. Do your own homework. MPOX cases in the United States are twice as high as they were at this time last year, and experts are stressing the importance of improving the vaccination coverage as transmission rates rise. So, all right, I'm going to end this subject. I'm done with it. Let's move on to my next subject. If you don't have your vaccine, it's probably a good idea to check what you're getting, what you haven't gotten, what your children have not gotten. And get the vaccines that they need. That's just... I believe in vaccines. I don't believe in over-vaccination. That's what I'm trying to say. So... Uh, here's my next subject. Do you remember when he or she loved you so much? Okay, you ready? Do you remember when he or she loved you 
<laughs> so much. All right. Here we go. I'm going to post this link. All right, don't worry. This is from mindbodygreen.com. I like that name. Mindbodygreen.com. Love is about much more than saying, I love you. And whether you and your love interest haven't uttered the words yet, or you have, but you want some proof, you might be wondering how to tell if he or she loves you. Love is about much more than saying I love you, and whether you and your love interest haven't uttered the words yet. To find out, we ask relationship experts what love means to begin with. Plus common signs, plus common signs that typically indicate someone is in love with you. Here's what they had to say. What is love? Love is as difficult to define as it is to explain, but it can ultimately be boiled down to an intense feeling of deep affection, according to the Oxford English Dictionary. It is also important to remember that there are many term It is also important to remember that there are many different types of love. As clinical psychologist Christine Hallett, PhD, previously explained to MPG, research has defined two major types of interpersonal love. Passionate love, which is what we think of as romantic love, involving attraction and sexual desire. And attachment, also known as compassionate love, which can be between caregivers and children, long-term romantic partners, and other deeply bonded pairs. The Greeks... The Greeks, however, specified the different types of love even further, identi identifying eight, which are as follows. Eros, romantic love. Pragma, enduring love. Ludus, playful love. Philosia, self-love. Storge, storge, familiar love. Phila, affectionate love. Agape, self-love. Mania, mania, obsessive love. In the context of this article, we're focusing on the love present in romantic relationships, plus how to identify it. And as licensed psychotherapist Babita Spinelli describes it to MBG, being in love means a strong emotional attachment that includes wanting to share your life, dreams, and you're physically and emotionally with some, want to be with someone. Spinell describes it to MBG. Being in love means a strong emotional attachment that includes wanting to share your life physically and emotionally with someone. She adds it involves a desire to, a desire to give, to be generous, compassionate, loving, and caring to someone. And it creates a strong feeling of commitment and bonding. When you are truly in love, the well-being and happiness of your partner is important to you, she said. And of course, along with the different types of love, romantic love also has stages, with the final being wholehearted love, according to licensed marriage and family therapist Linda Carroll, MS LMFT. It takes years to develop wholehearted love, but it does often be given many of the signs of love. It, it's, it does so often begin with the many signs of love we're about to get into. What love is not? Physiologically, physiologically speaking, many of the sensations we associate with falling in love are actually limerent, according to the licensed marriage and family therapist, Holly Richmond, PhD. Limerent refers to romantic infatuation marked by feelings of, of obsession and fantastical longing. <clears throat> it's the combination of hormones, endorphins, and emotional prioritization that occurs in the initial stages of a relationship. She explains, but it doesn't necessarily equate or to lead to wholehearted long-term love. That's not to say it can't, but it's important to make the distinction between lust and love. It's a, it's a combination of hormones, endorphins, and emotional prioritization that occurs in the initial stages of a relationship. She explains, but it's, 
it doesn't necessarily equate to or lead to wholehearted long-term love. That's not to say it can't, but it's important to make that distinction between lust and love. Okay, so I'm going to stop reading here. Love is a feeling, obviously. Love is emotional. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love is not blind. That's not true love. Love is not blind. You don't go into true love and have your partner backstab you. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. With love, there's no backstabbing. With true love, there's caring. You don't go, you don't fall in love with somebody because they have a fast car and a whole, and a shitload of money. You fall in love with somebody because you feel their heart. You, you become an empath for that person. You feel for them, care about their spirit, not just their body. <sighs> Is it important to have a sexual relationship with your partner, lover, wife, husband? Of course. That's a key to a relationship. If you're not having physical contact or sex, it's dead. It's dead. You will fall out of love. That's true. But love is a whole, like the world's round. It's full circle. It doesn't stop and end because you didn't get what you wanted in the relationship or right now or yesterday. It doesn't do that. You know how you love your children? That's a different kind of love. You made those children with your partner, lover, husband, or wife. You made those children with God's help who embellished love on your family. He passed down the grace of love, and that doesn't go away unless you really try to kill it because you're a selfish, a selfish person that doesn't care to destroy the relationship, doesn't care what your partner, lover, husband, wife thinks. You don't care what you destroy in your life as long as you destroy it. And you're happy with what you get out of that day. It's not, all, it's not about what you get out of the day. It's not about what you get out of life that minute. It's not about cheating, lying, and stealing. Love never does that. Here, I'll tell you a poem. The uh, verse out of the Bible, which I don't know, I'm just, it is about that love is kind. I'll read it. This is the truest. This is the truest. Um, this is the tr one of the most important verses out of the Bible that I can, can never even I can't even tell you this. read this if you're having problems with your relationship ready look this is 1 Corinthians chapter 1 Corinthians ver, uh, verse th um 13, 4 dash 7. Okay. Love is patient and love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. Is always hopeful and endures through every circumstances. I'll read it once more. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of wrongdoing. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth is wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It never loses faith. It, uh, it's always hopeful and endures through every circumstances. You know what? In my opinion, love is a true spirit. It 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 it, it will back away if you if you're if you're bad. 
and you don't have a balance in your relationship and you don't say sorry and you don't forgive each other, that hot, destructive, bad energy will destroy the relationship. Focus on when you, when he or she and you just fell in love. Remember the beginning and always remember you made those children that live in your house. You got married because you were happy in the beginning and you can be happy again. Don't give up, don't crash and burn unless it's so far gone you can't take the heat, you can't take that negativity anymore. You know why? I'm a firm believer in love that is a spirit. Love is the spirit of mankind, of the universe. Love is God's, oh my gosh, the most awesome creation, God. Love. The spirit, love is kind. Love loves, always love, never hate. Never hurt someone because you want something that that person can't give. Don't hurt someone for loving you. Don't hurt someone because they're telling you their feelings and being honest with you. Would you rather be lied to or told the honest truth? I want to tell the truth. I don't want to lie to anyone. I hate it when I lie. I don't like liars. I don't like cheaters and I don't like thieves. Okay? You know that. That's my motto. That's my motto for my podcast. I love you people and you don't even know me. That's why I'm sitting here reading to you. Okay? And if you could just send me some stars to support me. I need stars. I need them to support this channel. And I need to, I need stars, likes, follows, shares. I need stars, people, please. Please. Remember, love, love, always. Never hate. Hold, care, and cherish your loved ones. Because they might not be here tomorrow. And you are always honest with your feelings. Don't be scared to express your feelings. I love you people. Peace out till the next show.